caregivers. Have you ever felt like nothing is going right? Well, cheer up and welcome to Dave, the Caregiver's Caregiver radio program, where you'll learn how to avoid that dreaded thing called caregiver burnout and how to survive the grieving process. Join Dave and his guests now as they share practice tips and tools that you can start using immediately to help get you through this day. Now, here's your caregiver host, Dave Nassani. From Los Angeles in New York City, a big LA and a big Apple, welcome to all my listeners out there in Radio Land. I am Dave, the caregiver's caregiver at caregiverdave.com, along with my lovely, lovely co-host Adrian Gruberg at the caregiverspace.org, coming to you live and on demand on 17, can you believe it, 17 global and audio and video platforms, including our newest one, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Vimeo, Stitcher, <laughs> Blog Talk Radio, MixCloud, Listen Notes, Blueberry, Player FM, Podcast.com, VIP Internet Radio, Facebook Live, HealthyLife.net, and CaregiverDave.com. And one day I'm going to be able to do that in one breath. I'm working on <laughs> big lungs. And we're proud to be voted number one caregiver podcast in the top 50 on Player FM and one of the top best podcasts by Caring.com, and one of the top best podcasts on, oh, I can't remember that one. The last oh, thing you oh, sent me? Yeah, what was that? What was the name I'll of I'll tell people? you in a second. Okay. In the meantime, we do have an exciting show planned for you today. Uh, and, uh, feed Spot. Uh, feed Spot. I never heard of it, but... Uh, apparently, they monitor podcasts, and out of thousands of podcasts, they say that we are number three. I think that's pretty cool. Well, Adrian Gruberg is our guest today. <laughs> so that would mean it's an exciting show, right, Adrian? Of course. <laughs> but before we get started, I want to take a moment to thank my last week's guests, which is Arkady Valechko and Alexander Valechko. Investor, advisor, co-founder of Triple Agent Digital Media with a background in marine engineering, 22 years in the food manufacturing business, and his son, who is on the autistic spectrum, who is a genius. And thanks to the proper upbringing of Alexander, um, the parents, along with a very good coach, Clint Arthur, turned this young man into an amazing powerhouse. Not only is he a genius, but now he's socially adept at uh, speaking at Harvard, at NASDAQ. He's going to be speaking at Carnegie Hall. And the the boy is just amazing. He's a good-looking kid, and uh, a bunch of women are going to be following him, following <laughs> him wherever he goes now. Uh, and it's just... I trust that's not his only motivation, but... <laughs> no, no. But, you know, every boy his age, that's all he ever think about is girls. Yeah. Anyway, but... but I think it's a 50-50 because computers and tech uh, is, is his passion as well. He's a typical, you know, computer geek, just like Bill Gates and uh, Mark Zuckerberg and all those other guys. Anyway, um, it's, it's just a great reminder to anyone who has an autistic child that, uh, see, they didn't tell their son that he was autistic because they were afraid that it would limit him in whatever he wanted to achieve. And sky was the limit. And and so, you know, doctors, all they want to do is label you because that's what they do. They have no concern about the life that that young man or that young woman or the parents have to live. And so you need to make some decisions, you know, with your autistic uh, child and just use your instincts. And uh, there is hope. There is hope. Alexander is proof of it. And that show and all our shows are on all those platforms I mentioned and my membership site, caregiverdave.com. But today we're talking about Adrian Gruberg. Now, Adrian is an amazing woman. I've known her for, I don't know, four years perhaps. I've actually, I knew her online and then we met virtually and then we actually met maybe three or four times uh, on yes. the West Coast once and on the East Coast three times. And since I, I seem to be going to the East Coast a lot lately, I'm probably going <laughs> to yes. see her again in September when I go there to uh, to speak at Carnegie Hall and to sing a couple Carnegie, of Carnegie, how'd you get there? 
Went to Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> no, three, practice, practice. Practice, that's right. It's a three-day <laughs> amazing event uh, full of entrepreneurs. So if you're an entrepreneur, I'm sorry, you need to be there because you're going to learn a lot from Martha Stewart, right? She just sold her, her company after getting out of prison, right, for a, a billion dollars. And how do, you, how do you come back from, from prison, right? Because they wanted to make an example out of her. Uh, You're Martha Stewart. She's, You're Martha Stewart. She's, she's, another... she's more popular now as a jailbird than she was before. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got Ice T, right? Gangster, you know, uh, nobody that anybody would look at. But then he starts to do rapping songs and then producing. And then he gets into television. And he's been a fixture on uh, Law and Order as a detective. And uh, he married this girl. I think he married her, <laughs> Coco. Yeah, they're, they're, Coco, they're yeah. married. And she's, I guess she's an entrepreneur in her own right. And then we've got so many other Their people reality found TV it. show. Yes, that's right. And he produced it. And um, we have the founder of Ben & Jerry's. We have, I'm sorry, we're not here to promote Carnegie Hall. But since you asked, no, uh, but we that's... have... We have the smartest man in the world, smarter than Einstein. We've got the the editor of the National Enquirer and all the uh, the the rags, as they call them. Uh, what do you call those things? The the nickname for um, tabloids. The tabloids, yes, and just a bunch of other people. Um, so uh, I I get thirty seconds on stage, and I'm going <laughs> to sing a. I'm 30 sing, seconds. I, no, I'm sorry. Did I say 30? I meant yes, 60 seconds. I get 60 seconds because what can you say in 30 seconds? I get 60 seconds on stage, and I'm going to sing a few bars at the beginning and a few bars at the end, a couple bars, so that I can also say I not only spoke at Carnegie Hall, I sang <laughs> I at Carnegie <laughs> Hall. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a great opportunity, and... Um, uh, I'm I'm looking uh, forward to it. My my wife Charlene, which I don't think you've ever met, right, in person. No, but I was going to ask She's you. She's going to be, be there. there this time. And yeah. my granddaughter, who I who I put through beauty college, and now she needs to become entrepreneur like, uh, which she is a born entrepreneur. She she can run that gas station of mine, and she is going to come because I told her she needs to. And she gladly says, okay, and so, because she needs to build a client base now of all these people, and she's on the right track, but this is going to, like, throw her over the top. So you're going to meet uh, two great people in my life. Good. I hear some strange <laughs> noise. You know, Charlene, what are you doing over there? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but I'll know if she says, Dave, <laughs> well, I need to go. Drop uh, the mic. The yeah. Mic. <laughs> Of a caregiver. Well, I was going to say something else, but I forgot what it was because you see, if I don't. So, how much down, does, this, does this thing cost? Well, he's got a special going on right now for general admission, nine ninety nine. He took a thousand dollars off of that for a limited time. I don't know when he's going to put it back on. He's got five hundred ninety nine seats to fill because that's the new Carnegie. All they built. It's a smaller one. It's got 599 seats. Charlene's wheelchair makes 600, so there will be 600 <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there should be wheelchair seating in in Carnegie Hall. Usually, just what they do is a spot for the wheelchair. You for know. the wheelchair. Yeah, but that's so maybe that's why there's 599. Just... Yeah, yeah uh, uh, somebody just... who's with the person can sit with them. But still, apparently, there's only 599 seats, and so. Um, we are excited about that, and uh, I, again, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm just a mess here today. <laughs> oh, about the price, yes. So, so um, uh, it's a three-day event. So for nine ninety-nine, you are you are getting. I mean, and that's cheap for for three-day entrepreneur events. I mean, you know, Tony Robbins. I don't know what he charges for for some of his things that are they can, twenty-five thousand dollars. You know. And you're going to get mentored by some of the the best, the richest, the finest entrepreneurs in the country, as far as I'm concerned. And it's a great deal. For a little extra, I was able to uh, buy th uh, 60 seconds on stage, which I gladly do it. It wasn't that much extra. 
because, like I said, I want to be able to say that I shared the stage with Martha Stewart and Ice-T and, and all these great people. And I did. And I actually spoke there, and I'm, I'm going to sing there. Okay, but enough of me. We're here to talk about you, Adrian. <laughs> I couldn't sing at Carnegie Hall for anything. <laughs> Adrian, you can do anything you I want. I can't sing anymore. You sing Happy Birthday, can't you? Barely. I was at Harvard, and this one girl, she stood up, and she sang this nursery rhyme, or the first few bars of it. And, you know, she wasn't a great singer, but she was on in tune. And that's a great way to start a speech, by the way, just a little, because nobody's expecting, and they say, whoa, what's that, you know? And just about the time they're figuring out, oh, my God, they're singing a song, then they get into their speech, and it's a great opening. Uh, anytime you've got an unexpected opening, it's a great opening. It's probably going to be mm. a great speech. That's a that's that's a good little. Tip. I think I think Adrian, you'd be very good coming to Carnegie Hall. You're an entrepreneur, uh, whether you think you you are or not. I and, I have been. I supported yeah. myself <laughs> and, with my own uh, business you know, for years. For nine hundred ninety nine dollars, you might learn something from these ten great entrepreneurs. Be, I I know everything. I can't <laughs> learn anything. <laughs> Well, maybe you can teach them something, but uh, <laughs> uh, at least you'll get to see me, and you'll get to see my wife, and you get to see yes. my, my granddaughter, and uh, we get to spend another day or two together, and it's always fun mm -hmm. to do that, because I just really like you, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> I might even go so far to say, I love you. Oh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you complete me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting silly now. Yeah. Now, Adrian, Adrian hasn't been herself. I'm going to tell a little confession here, a little secret. Adrian hasn't been herself lately. Now, she's still in very good health, considering you're 71. One. 71. Oh, you're just a youngster. My wife is 75. <laughs> and she puts us normal people to shame. <laughs> and she looks great, and you look great. And... Um, you know, you're in good health, you're, you're not overweight, you've got a very slim, petite body, and you've got a great smile on your face, a very <laughs> hip hairdo, hip glasses. I mean, you know, guys should be hitting on you, but you already have a boyfriend, so. But you're probably knocking guys off, uh, saying, mm -hmm. no, 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 i got a boyfriend, leave me alone. I never have. Really? Never have. Interesting. Well, I was over her house, she lives in a beautiful loft. Is it called a loft? When you have the high, high ceilings, I compare it to. Well, the loft is 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 because it's a space. Like a uh, where it used to be a warehouse or something like that. I don't the, know. It, it was an industrial space okay. that we converted into a living space, and that's yeah. basically what loft. Which is the which is the hottest is. thing right now in Manhattan and and elsewhere. And I think of the movie Big with Tom Hanks, one of the first movies he made. And remember, he he rented this place. Because he got this job and he had all his money, and so he turned it into this playground. It, it, it kind of looks like that. It's got that kind of feel, but obviously <laughs> you have more furniture, but not that much more. Still a lot of roomy place. And, and so, you know, it's time to start thinking about downsizing. And every caregiver, every non-caregiver has to eventually start thinking about downsizing. Because you're saying, you know what? We're not getting any younger. We're no spring chickens. I don't know how many more years I have. I know I probably don't want to live to be into my 80s because I don't know many 80-year-olds and 85-year-olds and 89-year-olds who I want to be because they're not doing well. However, in all fairness to them, I just went to a woman's 100th birthday party. This is the, the aunt to the famous gospel singer Andre Crouch who passed away recently at the age of 74, 73, 74. She had her 100th birthday, and she still, she looks amazing, first of all. Doesn't even look like she's 65. And she walks uh, every other day. She used to walk every day three miles. Now she's, she's toning it down a little. She only walks every other day three miles. But she is amazing. She goes to the bus, comes to church once a week on the bus. You know, nobody goes with her. Um, the family, you know, uh, obviously they come to church with her, and they try to get her to say, oh, no, no, I can go, I can go on the bus, there's no problem, you know. So I wouldn't mind living to be 100 if I was like Aunt Harriet. But, <laughs> so I, I was telling, Aunt since Harriet. our guest didn't, uh, it's my fault, ah. I guess. 
Sorry. I'm trying to turn this off. We'll give you a moment. <laughs> <coughs> okay, it'll it, it may ring, but I'll turn it off immediately. You don't know how to stop it, huh? <laughs> uh -huh. All right, so I'll just write down here at 138, we need to like edit all this extra noise out. <laughs> 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 I'll put a G for or A for Adrian. Yeah, my end. Fault. Sorry. I can so, sit uh, on it and hatch it or something, but... <laughs> so what was I saying before I was so uh, interrupted? Uh, something um, about something. Uh, oh, oh yes. What are you yeah, talking about what you? great shape we're in, except that we can't remember anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, they say there's three um, signs of old age, and... Um, uh, uh, the first one, uh, I actually I can't remember what the first one is, but <laughs> that's that's the first one. <laughs> oh, memory, yes. Okay, well we got that down. So I, I love when we have these shows that it's just Adrian and I because it's my fault that the guest uh, didn't show up because I did two shows today and I I send the guests what they need, but apparently my brain says, okay, you did it, you're done. No, today I had to send two guests information. And so it's my fault. Margaret, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. We'll reschedule. But we get to speak with Adrian. There's no accidents, right, Adrian? Everything happens for a reason. No. Yeah. And I love our time together because, you know, we're not against the clock and we just, you know, there's no script. Uh, we're just doing what comes yeah, natural. Yeah, you don't send me questions. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, yeah, so... Uh, I'm going to ask Adrian some questions. I don't know what they are. They're just going to pop into my head. So, yeah, it's Adrian, a conversation. You're going, you're going through so much stress these days. I feel so bad for you. And so, uh, usually, if a guest is late or something, she'll say, "Oh, yeah, no problem." But I, uh, I don't want to bother her because I know she's just right on the edge of stress, and I don't want to upset her apple cart. And so, tell us what you've been going through for the last how many months and your symptoms. Uh, well, um, it all started no. <laughs> when I was three years old. No. <laughs> uh, the place that I live, the loft that I live in is very large. And yes. I'm one person. I have no kids. I do have a little dog now. And I got the little dog right I guess about six or seven weeks after Steve died um, because this place was just too big for just me to be kicking around in. And uh, I find that I'm only really using maybe even less than half the space that's here, except for the storage <laughs> where, where I do have a lot of stuff. I could use a few garages or, or a few storage rooms. Wait a minute. You got storage too? Oh my gosh. Can no, you I've fill got, up a whole I've got storage from from my old office that I put things in storage when I closed my business because I was supposed to be moving everything here. But it was only supposed to be going into storage for three months. And it's been 16 years. <laughs> so oh, my gosh. It's, it's crazy. But um, the, it, it went into storage when I didn't have any space for the stuff that was there. And, and now, apparently, <laughs> I really don't need it. And, of course, I've been spending a lot of money on it all these years. The storage. That's what storage is all about. They count on that. Yeah. Those are too lazy. I mean, Steve had two storage rooms that I had to empty out. Wow. And what did you do with all uh, that stuff? You sold it? Um, some Gave of it the away? stuff I was able to give to a collector. Mm. Um, Good stuff, who was huh? going to these, – these were – well – Hmm. To be One blunt, man's garbage is another man's treasure. No, right? these, this was not garbage. Well, some people <laughs> would say it was trash. It was or trashy. It was um, 
adult films from the 1930s to 1960. Loops. Adult films. Loops. loops. Black and white loops that you'd go into a peep oh. show to see. A collection so they're collector's of collectors items now. Collectors items. And I bet and it, by today's man. standards it's hardly uh pornography. Oh god. I mean you see a woman <laughs> in a little apron. Like the thing at Disneyland, the little thing that you call Yeah, she's a, <laughs> a, there's a woman topless in a little apron and she's painting. That's it. <laughs> That's a turn <laughs> on. <laughs> then there's the lady in the two-piece bathing suit at the swimming pool playing with a beach ball with her boobs. You know, I mean, this is so tame. Mm. But there are people that really collect it. Yeah. And... Um, like French postcards, that was the big thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I saw a French postcard once in my first marriage. I Those were real naked women, though. In a bathtub of spaghetti. I <laughs> I wonder, I've been looking for that postcard since the last time. I mean, I saw it in 1971, goes for you know, in Paris, and I haven't been able to find it since. Yeah, the French have been on the cutting edge, haven't they? <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Anyway, the Passion. other thing is, the other thing Steve had in his storage space were all of his old T-shirts, which he refused to get rid of. Because mm. every T-shirt was from something that he wanted to remember. Mm. Give us some and, examples. Oh, concerts, uh, television shows, movies. You know. I know. Stores, I, I have to clean. I have to clean my closet out because it's like okay, seventy percent of what's in here are T-shirts that I got yeah. from all these different places. And exactly. they do. They do all have sentimental value, and it, I only right. clean out my closet once every four or five years because it's so painful to let go of things that there, you're attached there, to. There are people that make patchwork quilts out of people's t-shirts, so that they oh, take the part. They take the part that has the message on it, so that that remains, you know, intact and still valid. Yeah. There's your entrepreneurial moment right there. No, I have I saw these people at a craft show, so I, it wasn't my idea. Well, that's okay. <laughs> if they're not doing anything with it, you can copy it. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, anybody can do it. Sure. I mean, you know, anyone who knows wants to take a course in patchworking. Yeah, I don't think you can copyright something like that. No, I don't think so. All right. So, did you get it's to the sewing. stress part? <laughs> the stress part is uh, well. We were talking about needing the space. So, I I decided about oh it it must be over a year ago that I decided to move. Uh, but before that, I redid my kitchen. And before I redid my kitchen, I had my knee replaced. Ooh, and I my, remember that. Yeah, and my knee was supposed to, my kitchen was supposed to be done before my knee. And it didn't end up that way because my contractor was yeah. so screwed up. You don't have to tell us about contractors. They give yeah, right. good contractors a bad name. I'm re replacing my patio here, and I'm telling you, these are the best contractors in the world. They show up every single day. They are so fast. They started last Monday. Today is the sixth day they're on, and the thing is finished. They just finished wow. painting it. I mean, it's not finished, finished, but, I mean, it's painted, it's built, it's got the roof on it. They put all the electrical ready for the fans. I bet they have maybe one or two days to go, and that's unheard of. So, that's fast. But I've had the other also, the nightmares, this, the contractors from but hell. But you saw the workmanship so, at my house. Yeah. You, saw, you saw the cabinetry, yeah. and, yeah. and the, I mean, the carpentry is just I love your house. Amazing. Everything was done, you know, off premises, built in, and then installed. So they were so, good, but they were just slow. Hmm. They were. These aren't the contractors that built it, right? They yeah. were the install. Oh yeah. So they were good. Yeah. 
My oh my god, my contract. But they were just I see slow. still my contract. Or I will I will wait for him as long as I have to wait for him because he's yeah, that good. The good ones do take their time, but as, except for mine, mine are good and they're doing pretty good. But yes. if, if they're between jobs, you you're lucky, but you know, usually uh-huh. they're they start other jobs, you start other and you know, you're lucky if they come every 5 days. Yeah, no, my contractor's been working at a house in the Hamptons for three years building this oh, house boy. and the woman decided I mean this woman has nothing but money and she literally decided after the pool was in she didn't like it where it was so she had to yeah, move, move the it. pool that's like she had um, to move the pool that's like we have a, a museum out here uh, where, <laughs> uh, Hearst uh, Randolph Hearst the- yeah, uh, Hearst Castle. Xanadu. <laughs> and so, he he brought full grown oak trees in and moved them where he wanted them, and then right he would put this there. And then he decided he didn't want it, so he moved it, it somewhere else. And God, it costs more than than the whole place just to move right. a hundred year old oak tree. You know, yeah. fifty feet. Yeah, I mean, you need That's a flatbed it. truck to oh, get yeah. the tree and there. A crane. Yeah. In nineteen twenty. Like in nineteen twenty. Yeah. When they really didn't have trucks like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think they built one just for the job. Just for him. <laughs> and then they abandoned it. Up in Castaic Lake they built this thing to build the dam just to do it and it's still there. They don't they don't need it anymore. So anyway, back to me. Yes, back to you. Um I decided to move. This first thing was really making sure that that was what I wanted to do, doing all the financials on it. But it's my lawyer. It's probably hard my, trying to decide that that's what you 100% wanted to do, right? I had to find out that I absolutely had to. Um, I knew that Steve would have liked me to stay here, but I also know that he wouldn't have liked me wasting money. So, the money that I'm spending on taxes is ridiculous, and it could go to the caregiver space, and I could do much more, uh, which is another story. That that's also a pressure. That's also stressful. Yeah. Because um, I'm not doing what I. I'm supposed to be doing for the caregiver space. I'm not writing as much as I should be writing. Mm. I'm not doing as much of the artwork as I should be doing. I mean, it's really on Corey's shoulders. And knowing that is stressful for me, right. that I'm putting that much on her. Um, but she's being very kind to me saying, well, you know, part of retirement is that you're supposed to take it a little bit easy. <laughs> so she's letting me you have a pass but as I get ready to move I had to find I had to interview realtors um what was that I had to interview <laughs> realtors and this what the hell is that that was a notification that I'm is that a zoom notification I don't know what the hell it is <laughs> um I Actually, it was a notification that I had a show with you to do. <laughs> I know. It just notified me, too. It, it's, my, <laughs> it's my group call, but I scheduled it at 6 p.m. Pacific, and I don't know why it's ringing now. And I don't, I'm still new to Zoom, so I just, you know. Well, it's giving you 10 minutes notice. Yeah. And I don't, I don't even know if you're available, but we're doing our third Zoom call. I was the only one in the first one, so I did a reading. The second one... Because it's new, I forgot to show up, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, this is our third one, which I'm ready for. What and, time? Uh, it would be 9 p.m. your time. I don't know if that's past your bedtime. It's only, <laughs> for, 45, it's only for 45 minutes. That'd be great 9 if you can attend. I didn't, I didn't want to. Uh, yeah, let me see. 9 p.m. Where do yeah. I go? Uh, just a Zoom link. Go to my... Uh, my page of uh, Dave the Caregiver's Caregiver. Okay. Dot 
Uh, not cut. Okay, I will the caregiver's try. caregiver Facebook page, and you'll see my invitation. Uh, either click the link, and that'll get you to the Zoom thing. And you can either do audio or video, or you can make a phone call and just type in uh, the meeting ID. So, I mean, that's about All as right, simple I'll, as you can get. I will see if I can do it. The reason right. I, I say I will see is because tomorrow... I have an open house yeah. for all of the realtors who will then know about the apartment oh, that's good. and become interested in selling it. Great. So far, it's only been my realtor. Of course, I interviewed about 10 different realtors before I picked the first one that I interviewed. Oh, um, love at first sight. <laughs> We hit it off. What can I tell you? <laughs> and well, and they. She was also the sister-in-law of a very good friend of mine who promised to take very, very good care of me. Mm. Um, and she's been incredible. That's so good. anyway, and you liked her also. Yeah. Um, and she has a house on Fire Island, and mm. you know, I mean, we have a lot in common. We're both New Yorkers, and whatever. Um. And she takes away some of the stress, but that's their job. Getting the apartment ready to show, getting throwing a bunch of stuff out, going mm -hmm. through memories, and saying, "Okay, I can get rid of this now." All right, it's yeah, it's reminded me of all my fishing trips. I only need, let's say, ten photographs of Steve on a boat with a fishing rod. Right. I don't need 2,000 of them. And you don't need the fishing rod, just a picture of the fishing rod. I that, gave the what... fishing rods to my contractor because <laughs> wow. he has six kids and he yeah. takes them fishing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, whatever has sentimental value, just take a picture of it, put it in an album. And he had, well, someone told Steve once when he had trouble getting rid of stuff and putting it in storage not even not even just throwing it out just putting it in storage to put a little stuffed animal in every box <laughs> so that <laughs> why his, so, that, so that his his memorabilia had company and and would feel warm and fuzzy um he didn't do that he finally grew up a little bit <laughs> My little my little boy. People want to know why I didn't have a kid. Um, okay. I did. You mean other than it being extremely painful uh, during birth and during puberty? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was puberty for 32 years. <laughs> um, anyway, so getting rid of stuff, living through all the memories, going through through all that carrying on a relationship with somebody who's very understanding but mm. he's also a bit of a hot mess so he in terms of looking for a new apartment i i developed an addiction to looking for places online printing out blueprints not blueprints floor plans um, because I've got to find three bedrooms, so it's it's our bedroom, an office for him, an office for me. I need walk-in closets. I need a big enough living room, a little bit of a dining room, nice kitchen. I mean, I know that what I find will need work. We're so, talking about Eddie, right? Yeah. Okay. But I can't buy any place until I sell this place. So it's it's this you know, you're balancing lucky, act. That's... You're lucky you're not in Korea because my partner was going through that. And before her husband, her husband, her father died and left her uh, the hotel with other siblings. And the government of Korea wanted their inheritance tax before you sell the property. They won't wait until the property goes into escrow or whatever. So they had to take out loans 
to pay like a 50% inheritance tax on this huge hotel, and then they can get reimbursed when they sell it. Uh, so, you know, well, things could always be worse, could... right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, that, in that aspect, as far as the taxes go that way, there will be no capital gains on this apartment oh because they they evaluated it when uh, Steve died, so that when I I was going to get a, a new mortgage, and they needed they needed to do their due diligence then, and I hope to get that for it. So Good. you know if I do. If I get more, I don't have that much capital gains tax to pay. But if I get less, then <laughs> they're not going to pay me. But yeah, you know. So uh, what what did you learn that, that you would have done differently? I mean, now that you're so nothing. wise, if you had to do it all over again, nothing. nothing. Just I I am. Um, what can I say? I'm good. <laughs> I plan Apparently. no, I mean I, I do plan things out. I'm a designer yeah. by trade. And as a designer, a designer's job is to solve problems. <laughs> so that's what a designer's job is. Oh. So I my my cousin once told me, she says, you know what your problem is? <laughs> she said, you let someone see how quickly you can go from the beginning to the, to the solution, from the problem to the solution. Then you figure out all the steps it takes to get there, but somebody has seen that it doesn't take a lot of work. For you to get to the solution in your head. You mean they think But it's it. a lot of work to get there. Don't you love those people and who say, here's your problem. I got it all figured out. No, she's right. She just told me. She said, don't let, it, it, it's, it's like, make them see you sweat. Don't, don't right. let them think that it just, yeah, well, I'm sorry, 40 years experience does count for something, you know. Yeah. So, I mean. I have moved many times in my life. I've learned from those moves, but I've also learned from this move that um, I'm older. I'm giving myself permission to ask for help. Um, Good. I gave myself permission to throw things out, and Good. Um, I'm a good editor. I know what I really need. I have more caregiving books. <laughs> I don't know how many you have. Donate Do you them to the library. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's scary, but but that it, that's a big part of it. There's that stress. There's all the stress of not knowing when it's going to be, where I I have it. I ha I've broken it down into a few places that I would like to live here in New York, and. Eddie is telling me, well, you know, maybe we should look out of the city too. And I'm going, well, if Where, we look out of the city, out of the city um, what's considered out of the city? Well, let me Connecticut, Off the island, oh, Connecticut, Connecticut out of the, or state. the island, someplace, you know. Yeah. If I bought a house on the island, like in the Hamptons, yeah. um, I'd buy one with a pool and I'd sell the house on Fire Island. But I would never move to Fire Island at my age because um, there's no doctors. <laughs> if, if you need a about doctor, the cat skills? there's a helicopter. There's, there's the Coast Guard and the helicopter yeah. that comes and gets you off and takes you to the hospital. So, I mean, I have to think ahead. No duplexes, the right neighborhood, the conveniences. I mean, I've got, I've got a basic plan. But that's not the only thing that's stressful. I mean, the this, this stress is also the Fire Island house, the expenses on the Fire Island house. The house is going to be 100 years old next year. Mm. And there are the expenses that are incurred with that. Um, 
do I really want to put all that money into it? Um, the community is very dependent on me for the things that I do for them. What do you do for uh, them? Hmm? What do you do for them? I am president of the community fund, and I plan all of their social events, <laughs> organize them all, do all the posters, host all the posters, sit and sell tickets. I do Luck, all that lucky stuff. Lucky them. Lucky them. <laughs> I need young blood on the – I'm the young blood on the committee. The rest oh my of my gosh. committee is like 85. <laughs> it's true. But – Oh, my gosh. I, I have met some very influential people. So yeah, Even influential people get old, don't they? Even influential people get old, if they're lucky. And then they get needy. And if if they're – if they're very well to do, then it's not a problem. Um, it's unfortunate. It can be sad. I mean, I have I have a dear friend who is eighty five, and two years ago, she took a spill in front of the movie theater. Mm. She tripped on the crepe soles of her sensible shoes. <laughs> And ended up with with a fist sized bump on her head, and now she's really got major, major, major memory Post issues, and, and she can barely walk. She's put on oh. about sixty pounds, and and I love this woman dearly, and miss her company with me, and um, I know. From my caregiving experience uh, and and the caregiver space, that you know, this it's it's this is something you just have to come to accept. And I want to be there for her, knowing knowing that there's nothing that I can do other than show up. And showing up is a big part of all of it. Um, geez, and then there's this show, Dave. I mean, the stress, the amount mm -hmm. of stress, <laughs> <laughs> all the prep that I have to do for this show. I have that picture of Cook, of, of Muhammad Ali standing over Sonny Liston. I got it. I, <laughs> I see it. I see it on the wall. I just realized <laughs> I love that picture. I love it. Yeah. You yeah. have it too? Yeah. I didn't see it. Um, you know, I know you're feeling all this stuff that you says, but I got to tell you, Adrian, you don't look like you are under any stress. The oh, way you're talking, I, the way you're laughing, your smile. I've yeah. seen people in stress, and so have you, and they look like hell. You know, you could see yeah, their face start wrinkling up right before your eyes. You I, can see. I am wrinkling up right here. <laughs> no, they can't I laugh. I stand in front of the mirror like this, you know. Giving Stop. myself a facelift every night. Stop, Stop. Stop. Um, I know that I know. You're handling I would never it well. Is what I'm trying to say. Thank uh, you. I understand. If this, is, if this is the effects of stress on you, then bring it on because I want. But there are like days that. that I don't want to get out of bed, and I just oh. lie there and watch television and and well, don't you probably do a need a day thing. off. That's okay. If, That's why yes, God made the Sabbath day, you know, to a day of rest. To watch Nate meet the press, yeah. yeah you weren't <laughs> even allowed to go outside and, and uh, collect your manna. You had uh, twice as much the day before. True. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Well, Liz, let's take a break. Good, good let's, long the, the, break other, the other thing is we'll talk, we'll talk about how fortunate I am. Yes, that's a great one because – we need to appreciate, and uh, yeah. we'll come back to it. All right, bye-bye. Dave Nassani, the caregiver's caregiver, has just released his sixth book entitled It's My Life Too. Reclaim your caregiver sanity by learning when to say yes and when to say no. It was specifically written for caregivers who know they should be putting their needs first, but just don't know how. Dave is the sole caregiver to his wife, Charlene, since 1996. He knows firsthand what caregivers are going through because he is one. 
and he now speaks all across the country offering caregivers his incredible caregiver support package. Even the airlines tell us that in the event of an emergency, to put your oxygen mask on first before you help your child with their mask. They know that those who don't heed their advice often black out, thus becoming unable to help either themselves or their child. And caregivers are exactly the same way. It's my life too. Reclaim your caregiver sanity by learning when to say yes and when to say no. We'll help caregivers who are neglecting their sleep, diet, and social life and learn to put their needs first. Pick up your copy today or buy one for your special caregiver. On sale everywhere and at caregiverscaregiver.com. Yes, that's uh, caregiverdave.com. we got a better domain. Every now and then a better domain will come up and we'll swap it out. And uh, How much will you pay for a better name? I I mean, I can get a much better name for like uh, $10,000, but I'm not willing you to pay it. You got it, exactly. Isn't it not insane? Willing to pay it. Because I know one day <laughs> it may become available. You never know. I mean, I have so many domains just protecting the domains that I, I already have. Me too. Did you know that now, if, if they're with GoDaddy, did you know that now they have a way of putting a value on all of your domains? They told me this the other day. I didn't know it. And I looked at all the domains I have. I've got a lot. And this one's worth uh, $500. This one's worth $750. They're just based on what they feel someone would pay for your would domain for if it. you don't want it. And I was going to let one expire that I didn't need. She goes, don't let that expire. She says, I don't need it anymore. She goes, do you know that that's worth $750? I said, really? So she talked to me. And I don't know if she's lying to me, but uh, I renewed it. <laughs> <laughs> now, they, they've they been very good to me with that. Um because I do have so many, they've they've given me really good deals, good package deals on the things that I have. There are some sites that are, that do cost me more than others because they are <clears throat> more in demand, and and yeah. people would pay more for them. But uh, you mean initially or each month? Each month. I mean, wow. every, every year it's 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 a more expensive domain. So what was your very first domain that you were using, and what is your ideal domain that you wish you could buy? <laughs> um, the first domain know. was uh, Caregiver Survival Network, which was, we didn't like the name from the beginning, and we... We were survival trying to... isn't an option. We want to survive. <laughs> no. we, exactly. And I, I wanted to, 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 to find a homonym, and I couldn't. Um, like Steve's, Steve had cable access network, so it was CAN television, you know. He... Um, and the interesting thing is that there were people who would call him and offer him a lot of money for it. Mm. Is that a homonym? Homonym. Homonym. Or, is, that, it, or is it a, a um, oh, I just had the word in my head. Oh, Starts I know there's a. another word. Acronym. 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 I, I think it's an acronym. It's an acronym. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. We, See, we, I don't we're know in the everything. Fact like the media, we are in the fact-checking business here. Yes. No fake news here. <laughs> no fake news. No. So anyway. So which one do know, you want? If you could uh, wave your magic wand. If I wand, could have anything? Anything. Anything at all, Dorothy. <laughs> Caregivers are us. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. I have I have a lot of them and I have a lot of good ones, and um, and I'll just keep them until I need them. Some of them I will need. Yeah. Eventually. I wish I had caring dot com or caregiver dot com or caregivers dot com. Yeah, well, the, com. I but wish already I, taken. but I but they're already taken. Yep. And I mean, the thing is, Gary Barg is not doing what he could be doing with with. 
his with the site. He's just got the great name. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the first. Uh, we had him on the show. Were you with me when? Yeah, was sure. Show? Yeah, it was a good show. Busy he was, guy. Hey, who is um, busy? I would also. We should also interview his brother, who's also oh, yeah? involved in in caregiving, but from a different aspect. We've had a lot of our competitors, so-called, on the show. Absolutely. You know, Denise Brown and. Uh, uh, We're competitors. I mean, if I don't think of us, I think that it's 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 We're a universe. The a, look, a third of the population of the United States is enough to go around. <laughs> the pie is big <laughs> enough. Yes. The pie is big. <clears throat> pie is very big. And thirty yeah. percent of those are dying. Before their loved ones do. That's an incredible um, number. That's like 100,000 people uh, a year. And I used to come from the community of Burbank. Now, nobody knew Burbank until Johnny Carson, The Tonight Show, and well, Rowan and Martin was... Laughing. So beautiful downtown Burbank is where NBC Studios are. And they they had a population of 100,000 for a long time. That's up to 150 now. But... That's like the entire population of Burbank just going away overnight. Boom. From where? Uh, well, that's the amount 100, of kids. 100,000 people is uh, from of, of 45.7 million, or uh, which I think is a very low figure. I'm sure the figure is much higher than that. Oh, maybe I, I need to add a zero. Is there a couple of zeros even. If there's 350 million people, so it's 100 million. Oh, I said 100,000. You oh, see what 100 I mean? Million. So are there it's, 100 million people in New York, New York City, or the no. whole state? There were, there, I don't know if you remember, there was a show called The Naked City, and you're too young. Um, it was an early show. The intro used to be there are eight million stories in the naked city, and this was in the early fifties. But no, there's no one near a hundred million people here. Maybe are nine million, sure? ten LA. million. Let me see. You know, in Is the outlying New York the most barons? populous city? Hmm? Is New York the most populous city in the country? How many or, people live in New York City? No, ask what the most populous city in the country is. Okay. It could I'll be L.A. That. because L.A. has so many. Yeah, less than suburbs. 9 million. And uh, mm -hmm. over here I'll ask, but what is the most populous city in the world? Oh. Be like Calcutta? That's what I figured. No, I was making that one up. I was, Shanghai, I, 24 Shanghai. million. Sure. So uh, it would be like four Shanghais just dying. Wow. I mean, just think of I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Um, yeah. But for me, it, it, the stress is just that I have, like, I went to Fire Island. My, there was a storm that destroyed a, a bunch of stuff, and then my air conditioner went out in the middle of a heat wave here. Oh. It broke. The service department of the place that I bought it has been closed for days. Um, they finally called me back, and I have an appointment for Thursday. But I mean, it's it's like just when I think things are on an even keel, something else is thrown at me. Yeah. Like last week, in the middle of the week, I was told that there was going to be an additional event on Fire Island. Do you think you could whip up a poster really fast? It's this <laughs> Sunday at six o'clock. Whip you know, it up. Whip it up. They just know that I can. They know that I can do it. And you can um, do it. So I did it. Yeah, it was pretty good, too. <laughs> did it put <laughs> and undue then hardship write. on you or no? I was up till 3 o'clock in the morning doing it, yeah. And you could sleep in the next morning? I could sleep in a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sleep in a yeah. little. That's one thing. I, I also, the, the fact that I have a boyfriend who is 
who really likes looking after me and making sure I eat Lucky properly you. Lucky you. and get enough sleep. And he's teaching me what the priorities should be in my life. And I'm teaching him a lot of things, too. Even from California, he can do this? Sure. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If, well, my... if he calls me and it's too late, it's like, you want me to look. You're three hours earlier than <laughs> I am. You can't call me at 11 o'clock your time. Well, he usually goes to sleep at like 6, 30, 7 o'clock wow. his time. <laughs> what does he do for a living over there, Venice? He's not in Venice. He's in Selmar. Oh, that's right. Why did I say Venice? Because we were in Venice. I rented a place in Venice. I mean, he is so close to me, Adrian. We should go to lunch or something. What does he do for a living? He he used to restore cars. Oh. I want a 66 American Chevelle. Class, American classic convertibles. Like right oh. now, he has a bunch of Lincoln Continental convertibles. American classic some of convertibles? Are, some of them are junkers. That you just buy to have an extra car that has the extra parts uh -huh. for when your car goes because there's just so many Lincoln Continental parts around for yeah. these cars. So he has a website with an address and everything? No. No website? No. He just keeps it as simple <laughs> as possible. He advertises on um, Craigslist and Facebook and... Um, Right. eBay. Give me his and... phone number when we get off the air. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna meet. <laughs> we're gonna get together and talk about you. Okay. <laughs> um, I've just... been a very good influence on him. He's been a very good influence on me. As it should be, you know. I yeah. used to sing at the senior centers um, uh, during their lunch hour, and uh, they are so comical to look at. These older people. Some of them in their 90s, some of them in their 80s, and uh, it's like junior high. You know, they they get into these little bickering matches. It's like they gossip. Uh, there's like romance going on. This one couple even actually got married there. You know, and they're like <laughs> 89 and 90. There's other couples that couples that won't get married because they said if we get married, our social security will will get That's you know. Right. And so uh, the government is forcing us to live in sin, they said. <laughs> right. That's um, right. Funny. They are. And I'm sure it keeps them young, <laughs> thinking they're living in sin. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, listen, we've, we've run out of time. Is there anything else we should say before we uh, uh, farewell? Just that after, after caregiving... You can build a whole new life, and mm. you just have to realize that every little change that comes along has a period of adjustment that causes stress, but you'll get through it. I know this one is a long one, and it's a very hard one, but if I was able to go through what I did with my husband and his mother, I figure I could you know, I learned a lot of stuff. I have a lot of wisdom, a lot of patience, and know how to get all my ducks in a row. So I just I want to encourage everybody who who's worried about what's going to happen after. There is yeah. an afterlife. Amen to that. And with that... Mm -hmm. Adrian uh, is Adrian at the caregiverspace dot org, caregiverdave dot com. Um, I think uh, Dave at Dave at caregiverdave dot com will work also. Mm -hmm. I don't really know, but it'll work. They tell me it'll work. Yeah, that's an easy uh, one to remember. So <laughs> that way you don't have to know how to spell my last name and all of that stuff. So thank right. you so much for everybody for tuning in. Thank you, Adrian. You're like welcome. it says, you don't look stressed out at all. I, uh, I, I mean, I, so, that that has a, a lot to do with the way you look at things. With feeling better about yourself, take Good. some of the stress away. All right. 
Well, you take care of yourself. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Next same week. time, same channel. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Caregivers Caregiver Radio Program with Dave Nassani.